Hi, we are presenting a series of videos talking about centrifugal pumps and their electric motors. Here is the centrifugal pump and its electric motor. Centrifugal pumps are among the most used equipment in industry. In fact, perhaps they only lose the first place for the electric motors. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcos. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now I am a consulting engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. See what will happen when we put an impeller inside a cylinder filled with water. When it rotates, the water inside the cylinder will form a paraboloid. We have talked about this in a previous video. Then we made two observations that will be important in the study of pumps. The first is that the water height difference inside a cylinder will depend on the diameter of its impeller. More specifically, it will vary with the square of its diameter. Ok, now let's look at this pump. Let's open its casing. There is the impeller. Now let's put it in the vertical position and compare it with the cylinder that we were talking about. The first thing that we'll do is to close the cylinder and put two piezometers on it, as shown. From now on, the drawings will be shown in two dimensions. In this way, it will be easier to follow the explanations. First, we must put some water inside the system. It will not work if there is no water inside it. We say that we are priming the system. Alright, this much water will be enough. Now, let's start rotating the impeller. The water level will not be the same in the piezometers anymore. It will go up at the piezometer linked to the edge of the casing and down at the piezometer linked at the center. If the piezometers have the same internal diameter, the length that goes up and down will be the same. The faster the impeller rotates, the greater will be the length that goes up and down in the piezometers. Note that in this situation, the water level inside the internal piezometer is below the casing. So, this stretch is no longer necessary. Let's put this extremity inside a vessel containing water and bend the other one so that the water inside it can exit. We have just created a centrifugal pump. In many cases, it is installed with the axis in the horizontal position, but the working principle is the same. We will have a suction here at the center and the discharge here at the edge. Now let's run a performance test with our pump. Note that we will run the test for the impeller of diameter D0. This was the result obtained from the test. We saw how this curve was obtained in a previous video. This is the representation that we find in the technical material which is supplied by the manufacturer. It is valid to the pump that operates with the impeller D0. But what will happen if we run the same test for a smaller impeller? Another curve will be obtained. Here it is, in the technical material supplied by the manufacturer. We can obtain this new curve using the concepts that we have seen before. Let's remember, the high difference of water between the edge and the center is proportional to the square of the diameter. So, this relationship can be obtained. Now, imagine that there is an orifice fed by our device. As we know from the hydraulics, the flow that will pass through it is proportional to the square root of the upstream head. Let's write it. We can apply it to the flow 1 and 2, relating them to the heights 1 and 2. But we saw that this ratio equals the square of the ratio d1, d2. Thus, we conclude that the ratio Q1, Q2 equals the ratio D1, D2. These are the relationships that will allow us to obtain the head versus flow curve for any impeller diameter. It can be obtained from a known similar curve. The pair of values Q1, H1, which belongs to D1 impeller, will turn into the pair of values Q2, H2, which belongs to D2 impeller. Note that the points slide over parabolas. Let's solve an example. This is the curve head versus flow of the 350 mm impeller. We want to find the same curve for the 300 mm impeller. 
This is the relationship between flow and diameter that we found. It turns to this when we put on numerical values. Let us do the same with the relationship between head and diameter that we found. It turns to this when we put on numerical values. Now we will construct these tables containing the values of head and flow. We will fill the left columns of the tables with values extracted from the 350 mm curve. The right columns will be filled with the results of our calculations. There it goes! Flows and heads under places. Now we fill the right column of the left table, multiplying each flow by 0 0.857 and the right column of the right table, multiplying each head by 0 0.735. The new pairs of values head versus flow are now transported to the graphics, the dots are united with a pencil, and there is the curve that we were looking for. The same procedure can be used to find the performance curve corresponding to any impeller diameter. Other tests are also important to fill the chart of the pump, such as the determination of its efficiency, the power that it will require, and its required net positive suction head, in short, NPSHR. But these are topics for other videos. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.